Hey guys, this is Tony. I uh, just have a little time to work on some projects. And one of my projects was my hair dryer, Dyson. I uh, love this thing. It had been sitting in a container for eight months while I was moving. And when I took it out of the container, it did not work. Now I have a Japanese toilet that had the same similar issue. It sat in the container for eight months. When I took it out, it did not work. And if you know anything about Japanese toilets, they are technical wonders that are amazing to have and own. They are expensive, just like this Dyson hair dryer is. So I was trying to do some research on YouTube, uh, finding information about how to fix Japanese toilets. Didn't really get a lot of information on that, so I had to do it myself. And I also was trying to find information about how to fix a Dyson hair dryer. So what happened is I was getting power and the lights would come on briefly and then it would just stop. And it blinked these three white lights. So what I did is I decided to start taking it apart piece by piece. Check the filter in the back. Obviously it wasn't that. Same problem. Realized I had to take it apart farther and it seems pretty intensive. So I kind of put it on hold for a while and finally went to do it today. So a couple things you need to know. One, the screws are small little black screws that have a head that's kind of like a star shape. So it's not a regular screwdriver head. So that means instead of a Phillips or you have to use just a flat head and it works pretty well if you have the right size. Uh, I don't know what the exact size Phillips or the flat head I used, but it was a little kind of like jewelry kit that I had. And I just started unscrewing pieces, just make sure you keep the right screws in the right places. Uh, the trickiest part is when you get to the buttons. So there's two buttons that switch the unit on and off and also cool feature. They are stuck in there by just glue. So you have to take another hair dryer or heating element and heat them up long enough to kind of dissolve that glue a little bit and pop them out. Be careful because they have a nice little shiny chrome finish on them. And if you're not careful, what will happen is your screwdriver will pop off and kind of chip away that chrome finish. Um, you know, obviously mine is a used hair dryer, so I'm not too worried about it because it's just mine and it's barely noticeable. So once I pop those two buttons out, you can just slide the rest of this unit off and that gives you the housing. Now there's a couple of rubber bands that kind of keep things in place and a couple more screws on one side and one more screw on the bottom. So there's one bigger long screw here and three screws up here. The rubber band on the bottom actually is kind of snapped when I kind of open it up, no big deal. It doesn't really hold it in place because the screwdriver or the screw itself does. But there will be another rubber band that sits across the middle right here, and that you'll put back in place when you're ready. Uh, the three screws, I just popped them out, and I got this off. And then right away, you have the motor. And immediately, my motor, I noticed, was seized up. Um, all I did is I took my finger, and I spun it around a couple times, and it completely just unseized itself in a minute. And I decided, what the heck, I'll plug it back in. And as soon as I plugged it back in, it works perfectly fine. Uh, obviously, all you do is put it back together. There are these little pads that gotta get put in for insulation purposes. Um, but again, they're pretty self-explanatory. You can see the shape of them and where they belong at the bottom area over here. Uh, and then you'll just glue those buttons back on the top. And that's it. I mean, it's a pretty easy fix for anybody else who has a Dyson hairdryer who spent hundreds of dollars on it like I did. And obviously don't want to just throw it away because it seems like it's not working. Um, that might be an easy fix like mine was where it's just the motor that got seized up. And it wasn't due to unclean filter or anything like that. It just had been sitting for eight months, hadn't been used, and it got stuck. So, you know, don't be afraid to check out what you have electronically as long as you unplug it. And if it's broken, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to mess it up even worse. And you might just be able to fix it like I did. Uh, so that's my second big fix along with my Japanese toilet. And I wish you luck on trying to fix your items. This is Tony, and I'll see what else I have to post for you the next time.